everybody, it's Ann Kaplan from Mom Me and Ann Kaplan Childbirth Services, and I am here with my besties. We're in New York um, having a little reunion, and I want to do a broadcast today about the importance of community, the importance of you finding your tribe, and using that foundation as something you can build upon, and really is the foundation of feeling joyful and balanced in your life as a parent. So I'm going to introduce everybody. This is Sasha. Hello. Sarah. Hi. Miranda. Hi. And Elena. Hello. And we all met when we were in grad school and we all lived like three blocks away from each other. <laughs> and then time marches on relentlessly and everybody moved away and left me all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> So Elena moved back to Spain, Miranda moved to New York, Sarah moved to Montana, Sasha moved to Fort Collins, and I was left all by myself in Denver. And um, that is years and years ago, but we have kept in touch, we love each other so much like sisters, and um, these girls, I rely on them all the time just to know that I'm not alone and I can have a group of people that I can talk to about anything that's going on with me without judgment. And um, I really want to encourage you guys to look for that in your own life if you don't have it already. So I just wanted to talk to everybody about, like, just say a little bit about what it means to you to have this group and, and how has that been helpful to you as a parent. Go, Sasha. <laughs> I cannot live without my tribe. It's not possible. I relied on all of you at different stages of my life. and. Um, like Anne said, we've known each other since we were in our twenties, and then we all had serious boyfriends, and then got married and had babies. All those are very different, difficult stages in life, and there's not one of you that I, I didn't depend on heavily mm -hmm. to get past in difficult times, in happy times, and um, you know, people live so far away from family these days that you do rely on right. friendships. Your and family, is, your friends become your family in yep, a way. It's for it's sure, in, it's impossible, and I do think there's a sense of vulnerability that you have to get out there and be honest mm -hmm. and, and depend on people because you cannot do it alone. No, you can't. And just like I said on Tuesday, you guys, like if you think that you're supposed to be parenting in isolation, you've got it all wrong. It is not like that and nobody can do it alone. You need to have a tribe. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid to ask for help and admit if you're struggling. So how about you, Sarah? I think that actually to play off of that, that's a huge part of it is that we all it wasn't just that we were parenting, we were learning to be like adults and professionals together. Oh, yeah. And so there was this big right. there was this big thing where we had different perspectives from everyone and we were, you know, in similar fields to start and then have all branched out into these other areas. Totally. But we've still had such shared similarities right. there where we've been able to sort of like, you know, trouble, you know, any trouble we had or any confusion we had, we could, you know, sort of truth test it and get some a right. tried answer and all of that mm -hmm. and so then when it moved to parenting it was even easier because we had already had these you know differences and changes and it was really nice to be able to mm -hmm. you know like communicate with each other and just say hey this part is hard and right. someone else to be like you know what that is hard and then but when it was joyful we we're like this part is great and mm -hmm. you're like yes this part is great so right. I think that was just the sharing of experiences and just knowing that someone was always going to be there right yeah yeah and I think to know that like all of us are very very different in the way that we parent and the way that we've chosen to live our lives the paths that we're walking we all have very very different approaches but that doesn't matter if you have people that are not not judging you and that really truly love you they're not going to be trying to impose their own opinion or whatever it's going to be just from love and support and and it doesn't have to be someone that you're like identical twinsies with mm -hmm. you know it's it's much more about the emotion and intention that you bring to um, to that friendship so yeah I think that, like we were we were able to not put up walls and if you mm -hmm. thought something was the right way right you know for any decision but then you started talking to someone who right. you trusted who was like well yeah. I don't see it that way you didn't have a wall there where you couldn't like be open to that really? you could actually yeah. just like we didn't have those walls between us and we could just be like yeah mm -hmm. we can be we, I can yeah. hear that right yeah. you could hear and listen yeah to you can like you can hear a d the conflicting opinion and it doesn't feel yeah. like an attack yeah that's yeah. really good Sarah. Yeah. and How you can you? vent like yeah and not feel, you know, like you can't do that with everybody, right. probably. Yeah, no, I can call any one of these girls at any minute and just be like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to smash my kid's face <laughs> into a brick wall. And they'll be like, You are so that. funny, Anne. <laughs> 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 not like, Oh my God, call Child Protective <laughs> Services. 
<laughs> so, right. you know, it's very, very important in my childbirth classes. I say all the time, like list a person. I want you to write that person's name down and their phone number, who you can call in the middle of the night and say, I need help. Come over immediately. And they're like, I'm on my way. Not like, what are you doing? Don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> so how about you Miranda I mean for me it was like I had you guys it was fantastic I had my first baby and then I moved across the country when mm -hmm. he was two months old mm -hmm. so um that was really hard because right. I wanted to have my group you know and you guys had all had babies before me knew what you were doing I wanted to have those people I could rely on mm -hmm. and I did I found that where I moved but it was um, took a while it was different yeah, yeah. and um, I missed you guys a lot at that mm -hmm. point especially I mean I would have missed you anyway oh, yeah. <laughs> but having <laughs> my first baby and yeah. then just moving across mm -hmm. the country was was big. I can't imagine yeah. it was big. No. yeah so of all of us I'm the only person who hasn't had the experience of having to uproot my family and build a new tribe <laughs> from scratch. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, everybody moved away after they had their kids. And yeah. I remember like Sa Sasha was struggling so much in the beginning of the moving from where she used to live to Fort Collins and how hard that was for you. It took like a long time. I was going to add something before we go to Elena that um, like Anne was explaining that we've known each other since we were in our twenties. And then we built, but if you don't have that, that's that's okay because when I moved to Fort Collins, even though it was only an hour from Denver, mm -hmm. I didn't know friends from high school or college or mm -hmm. job. Right. I I um, and it doesn't matter if you it's a short move, even in a new neighborhood, it's kind mm -hmm. of a fresh start. Kids in a new school, right. and so if you don't have that base of that 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 decades of knowing someone you can still find a tribe mm -hmm. you have to put yourself out there you have to be a little vulnerable and you mm -hmm. have to be open you don't have to be an extrovert like some <laughs> of extroverts, but not everybody mm -hmm. yeah. you just have to be willing to try out some people and then kind of start over like right. you said and then you find it avenues but and then you have to be patient which I wasn't at all. <laughs> and then Sasha's you, not a patient no person. I'm, <laughs> I'm learning to be more and it took me a couple of years honestly like at the two year mark I'm like oh my god I think I'm happy here <laughs> and I grieved yeah, yeah. Well, I, went, oh, I yeah. grieved Mm -hmm. And a good example that we have built our own tribes is that we're here. Right. And that wouldn't be possible if we didn't have friends at home with our husbands and, you know, tribes. Yeah, yeah that's a point. So that's a really that's good point. True. And, um, <laughs> yes, and we have another friend here who doesn't have kids, and she wants to have no part of this whole friend advice thing. So she's like parenting schmarenting. So, uh, oh, I also we're leaving them. all our kids to her. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to say something that's very, very important. I remember you were mad at me when I didn't ask for help when I was right. going through something. And then I just had, and I learned from that because people mm -hmm. don't want to say, can you come over and help me? Because you think, well, we all have children mm -hmm. and you have your own stuff and you have your own soccer and your own dinner to cook. You know what? Mm -hmm. A true friend would say, honey, I have to go. Mm -hmm. I have to help Anne. So I learned that lesson with that thing we had with Oliver. And then when I moved to Fort Collins, I had a hysterectomy. And when my friend said, can I help you? I said, yes. She's like, what can I do? I'm like, anything. She says, can I make you dinner? I said, I would love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when people ask, to, can I help you? If they're not sincere, that's their problem. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really good. <laughs> just say yes. Asking. Anytime and anyone asks you yes. to help for help, just say yes. And then I offer to help. What can I do? I'm like, you know what? I would love if, if you could help me run this errand because I wasn't able to drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and she said that'd be great. And she just took me. I don't even remember what the errand was. It was so easy. We had fun in the car doing it. Yeah. Um. And so when someone says, "Can I help you?" Yes. Yeah, just say yes. say yes. Be prepared with specific things that they can yes. help with. Because that same And be okay with that. It's all you have to have things you can Can you help with. me fold my laundry? Right. Yeah. Can you help me pick up the basket and take it upstairs? Right. Yeah. So if you, you guys, if you think that what we're talking about is self-indulgent, like, oh, you're just talking about how great it is to have girlfriends, that is not what I'm talking about. And this network of support is so important to all of us that all of us got on a plane to be here. None of us live in New York, and we're in New York right now because it is so important to us to maintain the connection that we have with each other. It is a lifeline to all of us that we're willing to spend money and time and logistical figuring out with our kids and everything. Mm -hmm 
and oh, dripping. Yeah. This stupid apartment does not have air conditioning. <laughs> the air conditioning broke. It is we're 90 degrees. Shoot. All of us. Yeah. We have fans. You think we're glowing? It's because we are sweating like crazy. But we don't care. We're having a blast. We love each other so much. So don't be afraid to rely on your tribe. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And don't be afraid to put value on that because it is crucial. And none of the other stuff in your life is going to work if you're doing it by yourself. And also, it doesn't even matter if you're doing it by yourself like what's the value in in just being in isolation and being an island you're kidding me happier for yeah. those yeah. people who don't yeah. have children like kathy does not have kids she still needs a tribe yeah yeah, yeah. everybody right? does kathy Absolutely. you need a tribe yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those things you're like oh i'll do it with the you know later in my life when my job is more established mm. or my kids are older. right make it happen we're alive right. today this is the time to do it so totally yeah, yeah don't don't white things. knuckle it through your parenting years and then decide to postpone your taking <laughs> care of yourself until yeah. later like yeah. being a parent is forever it's a really really long time to put yourself on hold so I hope that's helpful to you guys I'm having an amazing time in New York with my girlfriends hopefully we're gonna get the air conditioning <laughs> that's the final little ingredient we need for this to be yes. perfection so have an amazing Thursday an awesome weekend you guys and I will see you again and you know what probably the next time I'm broadcasting I'm gonna be in Mexico I'm jet set <laughs> so bye